Hi everyone and welcome to another Intro to Signal Analysis video. The topic of today's video is how to find the equation of a sine wave given a plot of that sine wave. So here's the plot we've been given. What you want to focus on is the blue line. That's x of t and that's the line that we want to find the equation for. Now we know that the generic equation for a sine wave can be written like this, a cosine 2 pi f0 t plus v. A is the amplitude of the signal. We know that the signal, uh, a sinusoidal signal, will go between a maximum of its positive amplitude, A, and a minimum of its negative amplitude, or minus A. Um, so here, just reading off the plot, we can tell that this particular blue sine wave goes between minus 2 and plus 2. Thus, the amplitude of this signal is 2. So we know A is 2. Now we have to find what the period of the sine wave is. The period is the time that it takes to go through one cycle. So say to go from its maximum value, right here, to another maximum value. That's T0. So T0 is there, and if we just read off this plot, hopefully we can pretty easily see um, that the period is uh, one second, right? So from here to here is one second, right? This is half a second. Each grid is half a second. And this goes a little bit and a little bit over here, and that makes a full one second. So the period is one second. So F0, the frequency, we know is one over the period. So it's the inverse of the period. So that, in this case, will be 1 hertz. So the period was in seconds. Sorry, yeah, the period is in seconds, and the frequency is in hertz. Okay, so now we've got those basic parameters. Now we have to just see how we go about finding uh, the phase shift. So it's helpful to rewrite our equation. So we're starting with this equation here. We'll rewrite it, and we'll substitute in um, for F0, and then we'll rearrange a bit. So the equation we're writing is a cosine 2 pi over t0 little t plus phi. So all I've done is substitute in for f0, right? f0 is the inverse of um, the period. Um, so I've substituted in there. Now I can rearrange this a little bit and write a cosine 2 pi over t0. Now I'm going to make sure I pull a 2 pi over t0 out of phi as well. So I can pull that out. And so this will be t plus um, phi, sorry, phi over 2 pi times t0. Okay, so I've rewritten this, but I haven't, um, hopefully you believe that I haven't pulled a fast one here. I, if I multiply all this stuff back through, I get 2 pi over t0t, that's the first term. And if I multiply 2 pi over t0 by phi over 2 pi times t0, I just get phi back. So I haven't done anything, I've just rearranged the equation. But it helps me to see that this here is in effect a time shift. We could call that t1. Okay, so it's how far is this sine wave time shifted? We might say time shifted off of what? Well, if t1 is 0, t1 here is 0, then we have the unphase shifted um, cosine wave. And I've actually plotted that here as the gray line on the plot. So that's just a cosine 2 pi f 0 t. That's not phase shifted. So obviously at 0 seconds, that's at its maximum value, right? That, this is the standard cosine plot. Okay, so the question is, how far did we have to shift the gray curve to get the blue curve? And so the amount of that time shift here is, well, how long does it take to get from the peak of the gray curve to the peak of the blue curve? Well, let me see if I can draw this a little bit better. So the peak is here and the peak is there. Right? So that is t1. That's the distance t1, because it's how far I'd have to move the gray curve over to get the blue curve. All right, so I could read that off the plot. In this case, I could read it off 
And um, it looks to me like T1 for this particular case is, let's take a look. So this is zero seconds, this is half a second. Um, this to me looks like about 0.33, about a third of a second right here, because it's farther than 0.25, which would be halfway. So it's about a third of a second is what it looks like to me. So T1 is a third of a second, and actually we'd write that as negative because it's a shift to the right. It's negative, it's negative here because it's a right shift. We've moved the gray curve to the right to get the blue curve. So I can just plug in and solve for um, phi now. Um, so I, I know that phi, or sorry, t1 is equal to phi over 2 pi times t0. Okay, so I could just solve for phi. Um, and that will be, I'll just multiply both sides by um, 2 pi. And so I get minus 2 pi over 3 times 1 over t0, but t0 in our case is 1 second, so um, this will just be minus 2 pi over 3. That will be our value for phi. Um, okay, so we've actually solved, and we have an equation now for x of t is equal to 2 cosine 2 pi f naught, which in this case is 1, t, um, minus, keep the sign here, minus 2 pi over 3. So that would be our final equation for x of t. But let's just take another look and see what, um, a little more of what this t1 is telling us. So basically, t1, right, which we determine just by looking at the plot is minus a third of a second, because it's a shift to the right, um, is phi over 2 pi times t0. So phi over 2 pi really is the fraction of the period that we've shifted. Um, so in this case, we've shifted by a third of a period, which looks about right, um, that we have to go through, that um, this curve, the blue curve, is about a third of a period to the right of uh, the gray curve. Um, so phi over 2 pi is the fraction of the period that we have time shifted. Okay, um, We didn't really have to think that through too much, right? We could just plug and chug. If we can read t1 off the plot, um, then we can immediately calculate phi. But it's kind of good to think about that um, because we want to know how much of a period um, we've had to shift a standard cosine wave by to get the cosine of the blue curve, to get the cosine of the signal that we want. Okay, so this is actually a pretty easy problem. We read things directly off the plot. We read the amplitude right off the plot. We can read the period off the plot, which allows us to calculate the frequency in either hertz or radian frequency. Um, and then um, we read the time shift off the plot, um, or the fractional time shift off the plot, if we want to think of it that way, and we can compute uh, phi. So this problem is pretty straightforward, and um, you should, with a little practice, I think you'll be able to um, do this with ease. Okay, so this video was made for the ECE 201 course during spring 2016. If you want uh, more information about this course, um, about George Mason University or the Volta School of Engineering, check out these websites. Thanks for listening.